Rich Gonzalez from Prep Cal Track. In the background, Arcadia High School's track. It's going and going some renovations for next year's Invitational. Uh, the purpose of this video is to go ahead and talk about the big announcement today from CIF, both at the state level and at the section level, regarding the 2020-2021 school year for athletics. As we all know, with the current COVID-19 pandemic, it has pretty much wrecked the schedules. Most of the students in California, a majority, will be starting the school year at the current time in distance learning, basically virtual learning. As far as athletics, CIF announced today that the sports calendar is not going to begin until right after, as far as competition, until right after Christmas, the day after for some sections. What's happening is, instead of having the typical winter, fall, and spring seasons, the winter season is being cannibalized, is being removed. Those winter sports are being redistributed to the fall season and to the spring season. So what that means is we're going to have a fall season going on at the end of December. That's going to code through mid to late March. We're all then going to have a winter season in between. The fall season is for cross country, but then we have the spring season for track and field. Believe it or not, track and field is going to start before the end of cross country season. And track and field will go from late March until very late June. We'll go into some more details on that later on. Uh, first and foremost, all of this is fluid. It's a situation that can change very quickly, and it will depending upon what kind of results we're getting in terms of these COVID cases, what local and state governments are mandating or requiring or allowing as we go along. If the results begin to show a decrease, for instance, in hospitalizations and in cases, that's going to open the door possibly to actually getting out there on the sports field, on the court, on the course. Uh, of course, if the numbers don't change, then this is all wishful thinking because we may still not have a sports season coming up in the winter time. So we'll have to wait and see. So in the meantime, make sure you're going ahead and you're wearing your mask. It's going to help out. We're trying to do the best we can as a group, as a society. So a couple of things. First off, we mentioned there's an overlap of the sports seasons. Also, there were rumors going around that there was a chance we would not have state championships this year. Because of the condensed schedule, those might be the first to go. Fortunately, we're going to have those. They've been preserved. So we will have state championships in all the sports that already had in past years state championships. One note, one change in those sports that have a state championship series longer than one a week, for instance, basketball, it's being condensed this year where both the regionals and the championship for those state tournaments must be done within one week's time. So you'll see a change in a sport like basketball, for instance. But for cross country, state meets all in one day. Uh, qualifying is a separate step beforehand. For track and field, state prelims and state finals in two days. So our sports will not be affected there. Uh, one thing that's very, very interesting there are 10 CIF sections. So far, we have heard from five. After the state ruled and said, this is the calendar, we've had five CIF sections that have come forth and released their own calendars, which pretty much coincide with what the state guidance is doing, the state CIF. The other five, four of them have either not replied yet officially with what they're doing or have stated that they will release their calendars in the next few weeks. The one real interesting one is the CIF Northern section. They are in the uppermost part of the state, right along the Oregon border. The number of COVID cases and the problems there have been very, very minimal. There have been no lockdowns of any consequence there. Therefore, right now, that CIF section is prepared to actually have their season unchanged, still starting late August and going through November. Now, November is when they have their CIF finals. Remember, under the new state schedule, the state meet isn't until March. So if you're wondering, does that mean if they, whoever wins their Northern section finals in November, will they be advanced to the state meet in March? From what I understand, the state CIF has put the word out that in order to participate in a state championship this year, you must be following the calendar, the new calendar they've put out. And so therefore, the end of the season for Northern, for Northern section would actually be their CF finals. That's pretty interesting. Okay, uh, as far as, first off, between now, right now we are in late July, between now and late December, which is the off season, CF has changed a couple of rules. They've actually relaxed some of their rules, but a couple key things to, key things to keep in mind. First off, summertime rules are in effect, so there's a lot more 
liberty for athletes to go ahead and do things unrestricted. This, of course, is all dependent upon it being safe and permissible to do so based on local health guidelines. So once those do free up, then you can start seeing potentially some all comers in the off season, potentially in November and in December. The one, the one big challenge there is gonna be finding facilities, finding schools that will let their facilities be used during these challenging times. Uh, also, in terms of unattached competition, until the season starts in late December, athletes can compete unattached now, we have to be really, really careful here because there are some people that might want to go ahead, for instance, and leave out of state somewhere where you can compete in September, October, November. Keep in mind that most competitions out there are actually under the guidance or under the auspices of the National Federation. What that means is those are actual official high school meets. They are not supposed to, they are not allowed to, allow athletes to compete unattached in those competitions. So just because CIF announced today, yes, you know, you can compete unattached. If your school allows you, you can go ahead and leave the state and compete elsewhere. Well, CIF will give you permission, but the other state associations will not for their official meets. So keep that in mind, be very careful, make sure you're checking with your athletic director to make sure that you don't create a problem for a meet. You may be okay, but if you go to a meet somewhere else, say, uh, Utah, for instance, it's a high school meet and you compete in that unattached, a contamination rule can come into effect where those kids from Utah competing by their state rules, they could face penalties. So be very, very careful there. Uh, as far as the state cross country, as far as the CF cross country season, things can be a little bit different. First off, as we mentioned, in some sections, it will start as early as December 26th, the day after Christmas. As far as the meets, Obviously, right now, meat directors are scrambling. My phone was burning up today for meat directors saying, you know, what does this look like? What is this date? And so forth. They're scrambling to go ahead and try and get approvals and figure out which meat dates fit best for what they're trying to achieve. Uh, a couple things to keep in mind. Uh, first off, in terms of travel meets, CF said that in terms of teams that want to go ahead and leave the state or teams that want to come in from out of state to compete, they will, again, defer to any sort of guidance from uh, local, regional, and state health offices in terms of, you know, we've seen a, as far as quarantine goes, they're not allowing people to travel. So that's something you need to monitor closely. I know there are some major meets nationally. We all know Nike Cross Nationals was canceled. Uh, I understand Bob Furman, I was told, also has been canceled in its full format out of state competition. It may be a city of Boise only competition this coming year. But there are other meets that also, that are major meets that will be forced to make a decision soon that might be postponing or canceling theirs as well. And as those come in, we'll go ahead and uh, keep you apprised of those. Another big announcement, I heard this through the grapevine a couple of weeks ago, actually the meet director reached out, but today he confirmed officially the Woodbridge Invitational, the largest high school cross country meet in the nation. This year, it will not happen in person. They are going to a virtual format. Uh, I've already had a couple of coaches who have asked me, what is a virtual format? How does that work for cross country? A virtual format, it used to be back in the old days for, for track and field, it used to, call, used to be what's called postal meets. What that meant is, let's just say you were in Northern California, you would have your kids run a time trial for a 1600 on the track. You would go ahead and go online, submit your marks to a central location, and they would have you in a standing. Somebody else in another part of the country would do the same thing. In the end, with all these different people all over the place, you can compare marks. That's somewhat practical for track and field, although not too popular, especially nowadays. Um, it's really a novel thing as far as doing it for cross country. Obviously, cross country, you have different courses. So to try and compare kids from one course here to one over there, obviously it's very different. Now, some of you may say, well, wait a minute, Woodbridge is a very, very flat, a very flat course. That's an understatement. It is, it is super flat. Believe it or not, in some parts of the country, in some parts of the state, it is hard to find uh, a really flat area to go ahead and have a cross country race. So that may not come off as easy as possible, but they're trying to give it a go. Uh, regarding the state meet itself, first off, regarding the competition format. So right now, the National Federation Office, they're the governing body that oversees all the state associations. They've already stated that if trends still are such in COVID-19, where cross country is considered to be a high risk sport, or in this case, a medium risk sport, they are requiring adjustments to be made. I'll give an example. 
if we are in a situation where they are limiting the number of competitors, what you will probably start seeing is meets that will have what's known as staggered starts. You will have team A that will go ahead and start on a three mile course and they'll get going. And maybe 45 seconds or a minute or a minute and a half later, another team. Or to try and keep some competition in it, you might see the number one runner or the number one and two runner from each school in a separate race take off. Then 45 seconds later, the number three and four runners go on. So it wouldn't be a true integrity as far as competition goes, but in the meantime, it'd be a modified version. The goal is to eventually, if we have COVID-19 numbers under control as we go on, and the governor lifts restrictions, eventually we can have larger groups, which also means larger race sizes uh, in cross-country race. To give you an idea of the problem we have, California has the two largest cross-country invitationals in the nation in terms of competitors. I think last year Woodbridge had around 11,400. I want to say Mount Sag was like 8,600. California also has nine meets that have at least 2,500 competitors. Also, you've got to take into account the fact that these meets also bring in large crowds. So if you have Woodbridge, for instance, you're talking about over the course of two evenings, or if it's over the course of the heavy evening, it would have been something in the neighborhood of around 10,000 people there. That would have been a major red flag. That wouldn't be pulled off. That's one reason why they're going to a virtual format. But as we go deeper into things, the question is going to be, okay, will you allow fans for cross country? That remains to be seen. We don't know yet. We won't know until we get into the season and we see what the patterns are with COVID-19. I asked the commissioner for the southern section today, Rob Wygott, does this mean that there is a chance that we will have staggered starts, this kind of a, a bastardized version of competition at the CAF finals? Uh, he said, quote, everything is on the table. All options are on the table. So it can be. We hope it doesn't, but it will depend upon again circumstances. So we're hoping that's taken care of, but it could happen. Uh, also, in terms of calendar dates, if you are a meet director, if you can, please, once you have it confirmed, email me your meet date. We'll put it on the master calendar email address, richgonzalestrack at gmail.com. Um, as far as the state meet for cross country, it is set for March 27th. It sounds so odd to be saying it literally, what is it, four, four months after we would usually have that. March 27th, Woodward Park, it is almost definite. I say almost, there's a formality to make sure the city signs off on it, but right now all system appears to be go. In case you're wondering, because I know people think, whoa, wait a minute, Clovis, Fresno County, Heat, uh, Dustin Beach up from Buchanan High School actually researched it and looked up and typically, uh, typical annual weather in late March in Clovis is 72 degrees as the high, 72. Just so you know, back at the 2018 California State Beat, our high that day was 72 degrees. Now granted, it was the hottest state meet ever for California cross country. So it could be a bit warm, but I know right now everyone wants to get on that course regardless of situation. We're not gonna find under our current COVID lockdown, we're not gonna find ideal situations. We're gonna need to try and make the very best of what we're dealt with. Okay, also as far as the, uh, okay, so that's track and field. That's cross country. Now let's go ahead and move on to track and field. Track and field, the meet, the season starts the week before the end of the California State cross country meet. So we're talking about mid-March. That's the official start of competition for outdoor track and field in California. We are going all the way through to the last weekend in June for the state meet in Clovis. The state meet, again, I know you're wondering, whoa, it's gonna be super hot. It's hot enough as it is in late May. We've researched it in late June from what we saw this week. The average temperature in our research, it's five to six degrees warmer in late June in Clovis. It's very hot either way. I did speak with uh, Brian Weaver, the state meet track and field director for the California state meet, and he did confirm that if need be, they can also adjust the time schedule, start state finals uh, later on in the day. If need be, they can go ahead and tweak things, start later to try and avoid some of the hottest hours there, uh, because last year there was about 75 minutes built into the schedule that can be removed if done so carefully, okay? And as it is right now, yes, it's going to be, it is going to be at uh, Buchanan uh, High School Veteran Stadium in Clovis. 
the as far as the regular season for track and field, same thing as in cross country. A lot of meet directors are scrambling right now to try and figure out which date they can do, if we can have meets, and what their schools can approve. I can tell you right now the Arcadia Invitational. Currently, we are tentatively set for Friday and Saturday, May 7th and 8th, still waiting on board approval, and maybe a few days at least to get that, but that's what we're trying to hope for, is going that weekend, uh, which would be weekend number eight in the season, which is our normal weekend. I've had other meets that are already checking in. Mount Sac, right now, tentative, tentative, would be two meets. In mid-April would be their regularly scheduled meet, which would be for the elite level, the professionals, as well as the colleges. That one, at this point in time, has not changed. And unless they get some sort of a directive or, or, or guidance from USATF or maybe NCAA, that will stay there. However, the high school, the high school portion of Mount Sac, that is tentatively going to be on May 15th, uh, the middle of May, high school only uh, portion for that. Uh, and again, once that's confirmed, they will get the word on that and we'll help them get the word out as well. As far as the other meets, I'm already hearing from meets around the state. We will again update that calendar this week. So once you know, email me richgonzalestrack at gmail.com. Um, I think for right now, those are some of the main things. So I think the most important thing is this was great news today, a development as far as having this rollout calendar. As you saw, there was no state meets that were, or there were no state championships that were eliminated. In several sports, they have the same number of weeks in their season as usual. It's just pushed back. And in these sports also, you're allowed the same number of maximum competitions. So point being is, there's a chance, although it's later in the calendar, we will have just as many competitions, hopefully in most cases, the same competitions as we would in usual years. That being said, that's great to hear. That's great news, but it all comes down to what happens between now and then. If we're in a situation where the numbers don't change as far as whether it be, whatever they're looking at, whether it be deaths from COVID-19, whether it be hospitalizations, whether it be ICU hospitalizations, whether it be cases, whatever metric is used by our government, by our governor, if there's no improvement there or not enough improvement there, or it goes the other way, then all this scheduling is for naught. So it's really important that we try to be as careful as we can during this pandemic and taking care of ourselves and those around us. Uh, we'll have some more information on the whole COVID-19 as it impacts CF Sport on our website. Uh, this is Rich Gonzalez from Prep Cal Track. Thank you.